What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Hurricane watches are now in effect from the Apalachicola Bay all the way to Sarasota. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is about to get very serious, folks. And as you can see from the latest cone right here, there's the hurricane watch uh, right there. There's also a storm surge watch from Collier all the way uh, to the App uh, county to all the way the App to the Apalachicola Bay. So this is something we absolutely have to pay attention to. We have a bunch more graphics that we're going to show you in just a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and go over the public advisory. Still a 40 mile per hour tropical storm. The pressure decreased even further down to 995 millibars. So it's going to be at some point where these winds are going to catch up at this point because you don't see very often a weak tropical storm at such a very low pressure so either one of two things are, are going to happen in my opinion the f one of the things that's going to happen is the storm's going to expand out considerably uh, primarily because uh, primarily because you have low pressure when you have stuff like this it's either going to expand out considerably or it's going to start strengthening i personally see a combination of the two of these happening i see this spreading out quite a bit which in a way could actually make the storm even worse with storm surge and all the and increased uh, area of hurricane force winds but I also see some intensification going on with this, so we'll have to pay attention to this very, uh, very closely. We'll have to take this very, very seriously as time continues to go on. Tropical storm force winds, uh, at least from what I'm looking at, currently extend out 70 miles from the center. So they are, the storm is expanding in size. We were at 60 miles from the center when this thing got designated. Now we're at 70 miles from the center. So that's a pretty interesting situation we have going on. Right here, it is moving northeast near 3 miles per hour. It is currently 95 miles east-southeast of Cosmo El, uh, Mexico over here, pretty much in the Central Caribbean Sea. So this is something we need to monitor for sure. We still have tropical storm warnings for parts of the Yucatan and western tip of Cuba, which this is now forecasted to make a very close pass to or make landfall as a, as a tropical storm or at least into in this western tip of Cuba and then it is forecast to get to at least category 2 strength according to the National Hurricane Center before it approaches the big bend of Florida and we also have this coming up right here. This is our peak surge forecast from the National Hurricane Center. We are looking at 7 to 11 feet from the Lucia River to pretty much north of Tampa Bay over here. We're looking at 5 to 8 feet from here to the uh, uh, Ann Col uh, Colty River. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing a lot of this. I'm not familiar with Florida, so I do apologize for that. We're looking at 4 to 7 feet in this part of the, of the Big Bend, and then 2 to 4 feet from Indian Pass, to, uh, which is in the Apalachicola Bay, all the way to uh, uh, to this river right here, one, uh, one to three feet uh, for pretty much for Monroe County as well as the Florida Keys, two to four feet from Collier County all the way to the Tampa Bay. So we have a lot of stuff we need to continue to monitor as time continues to go on. And considering how if this is going to increase or not, if the intensity of this is going to increase or not, I could see these storm surge values definitely going up with it. So this is something we absolutely have to take very, very seriously as time continues to go on. So here's our key messages from the National Hurricane Center. It is forecast to become a hurricane over the eastern Gulf, and there is an increasing uh, uh, increasing risk of life-threatening storm surge, flooding from heavy rain, and hurricane force winds along portions of the western uh, coast of Florida and the Florida Panhandle beginning as early as Tuesday, although it is too soon to specify the exact location and magnitude of these impacts. Residents of these areas should monitor updates and all that stuff. Since hurricane watches are now in effect for pretty much the, the Apalachicola Bay down to near Collier County, around the around Port Charlotte, rather, um, what I would say is that is uh, what I would say is this. I know fr I, from what I understand, voluntary evacuations have been I uh, issued for those areas. Listen to your local officials. Listen to Governor DeSantis. If they tell you to evacuate, evacuate. They are doing this to protect your life. You, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. So if they issue evac if they issue mandatory evacuations, take those very seriously. This thing is moving through good conditions for very intense intensification right here. 
you know, what's going to be driving this intensification, obviously, is the extremely warm waters in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico right here, 30, uh, 29 plus degrees Celsius all over the place uh, from pretty much the Yucatan Strait all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Insane amounts of ocean heat content are also going to be driving this as well. We're looking at a lot of areas over here of 125, 150 plus OHC, especially as this moves through the Gulf Stream on its way to the, uh, to the Florida Peninsula. So that's the two big things that's working for it. Wind shear over here. The wind shear in the Caribbean is not stopping this really from developing. There is some issues with the, the storm in the northern part of, the, of it, but I wouldn't be too concerned about that. That's that's going to most likely take care of itself in the next 12 hours, and we're like, likely going to see some pretty intense intensification by the time we get up by the time we get to the Gulf of Mexico. So. People have been asking me, what do you think it's going to be before it gets to the Gulf, and what do you think it's going to be at landfall? When it comes to the landfall parts, I it's too uncertain for me to figure out because a lot of models are saying this, a lot of models are saying that, a lot of models are saying uh, this, that, going in loops and all that. So I'm not going to really give you uh, give you that. I will say that a major hurricane is not off the table at this time. How strong could it get before it gets to the Gulf of Mexico? I think it could get up to about 60 miles per hour before it enters the Gulf, which, or maybe even 65 if it wants to get that strong. The only thing that's really stopping this thing from organizing and strengthening it is if the storm gets in its own way. And what I mean by that, if it becomes poorly organized and all that stuff, but it's getting more and more organized by the second. It's just taking its time to do that. Likely going to start intensification this uh, this evening into the overnight, so we'll have to monitor it there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some of the model runs, the latest model runs we've been showing, we need to talk about. Here's the 12Z runs that we have coming out for the HAFSB and HAFSA so far. So here's what we have going on. This has this organizing, strengthening up to down to a 982 millibar system by the time it uh, moves parallel to the, by the time it moves off the coast of Cuba right here. Then it starts to rapidly organize and, and intensify further. Gets down to a 936 millibar system before making landfall as around either a cat a high end category three or around low end category four strength right there. So that's the HAFSB, HAFSA, as you can see right here. Things start to organize and rapidly intensify as soon as this, uh, even in the, uh, the Yucatan Strait. And as soon as it makes that pass by Cuba, it's going to start its rapid intensification phase. Gets down to a 941 millibar system. So similar to the HAFSB, high-end Cat3, uh, cat low-end Cat4 is the most probable in this scenario right here. Now we'll show you the h wharf right here. Here's the h wharf for Idalia right here. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it. The h wharf actually has us down to a 979 millibar system before it crosses into the Gulf of Mexico. And then it makes landfall on the western tip of Cuba right here and then things start to reorganize and re-strengthen by the time it approaches the Flor uh, Florida Peninsula definitely could see a scenario where maybe the Florida maybe the, the Tampa area could definitely see some tropical storm force winds maybe hurricane force gusts before making landfall in the Big Bend right here according to the H wharf Last model we're showing you very very quickly is the HMON right here as we go ahead and pull that up for you. HMON has this organizing and strengthening, once again, similar to that. Gets down to a 931 millibar system when it makes landfall near the near the Apalachicola Bay. So this is definitely definitely part, part of the stronger part of this, which would be indicative around a Category 4 system. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as time continues to go on. We'll keep you updated here, but we're closing the video out right here. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications and leave a like for more updates. But with that being said, have a wonderful evening, guys. Stay safe.